Today we're taking a look at the Duncan, the tier nine British battle cruiser, and I'm grinding through it. This is where I'm trying to get to the tier 10 without necessarily using all of my free XP. I will admit for a lot of these videos where you see me grinding through some of these newer lines, I use my free XP to free XP the modules. So I'm not playing a fully stock ship, it is fully upgraded. That helps a lot when it comes to tier nine these days. This is one of the worst tiers to be playing right now, considering just how many super ships are in the game. Of course, we're getting some of these missions for super ships as well, which makes playing tier nine extremely difficult. Whereas in the past, of course, tier nine was one of the better tiers to play since you only had plus one, minus two. So you're often facing tier seven, not even having to deal with much of tier 10. And even if you were, Tier 9s tend to stack up reasonably favorably against their Tier 10 counterparts. They're not too far off, although they are a tier lower. Against super ships, it's a little bit harder. So the Duncan being a battle cruiser, not necessarily a battleship, we want to be flanking. So we're in the corner of the map here. And as the enemy team pushes in, we're providing a really strong crossfire. Notice how much of my team is just in the middle of the map around the B cap. And that forces this Annapolis to angle to them. And that's going to be perfect for us as we get a really nice salvo in. And that's going to be what you want to do in these British battle cruisers. And you're going to do a lot more of this in the St. Vincent when you get to tier 10. I think the problem here is the guns don't feel quite so consistent to me. I've been very positive about this line, especially the tier 7 and the tier 8 really have been really, really nice to play. I've been having a tougher time with this tier nine. I'm around halfway through, maybe a little less than halfway through this grind at this point, and it's been tricky. I think what I really am noticing here is I'm lacking some gun caliber. At tier eight, 406s certainly feel pretty good. The overmatch is nice. At tier nine, it starts to struggle a little more. Some more cruisers can bounce you. And given that these guns are all you really have, it makes it a little bit of a tough ship to play, especially into these super battleships and that. We do have some HE though, which is quite nice. I think that's one of the better points of this line is having two really good ammo types to use, where if your guns aren't able to overmatch, the AP isn't gonna do good damage, you can always swap to the HE, get some fires, and do some fairly respectable damage. This line, of course, has battle cruiser dispersion. Even though the Sigma doesn't look amazing, the actual dispersion is quite nice, and you've probably noticed throughout my videos on this line that I've really enjoyed how consistently it punishes broadsides, and I've really, really enjoyed using the AP on this line. The Duncan so far hasn't felt like that to me. It's possible I'm not positioning in very interesting or good positions where I'm getting those broadsides. Maybe I'm playing too passive or sometimes too aggressive if I go in and die, but the Duncan should be able to support a little bit more aggressive play considering we have a super heal. And you'll see that in action a little bit. It does save my life sometimes and it's a very welcome feature of this ship. But we have to worry about our broadside on this ship. I do get quite lucky here, I think, that the Satsuma did not overmatch through my bow into my citadel or even my broadside at that point. I was shooting all three of my turrets. Generally, that means I'm exposing enough broadside to be citadeled. And Duncan has a massive citadel. Much like the tier eight, we have a gigantic citadel to deal with here. So given that this ship does have a super heal, you don't want to be eating citadels or torpedoes. Those are the two types of damage you can't eat in this ship. And it's been going all right so far. The super heal is quite nice for healing back a lot of HP that you're gonna lose thanks to the relative poor armor. You wanna stay angled here. And we'll see in a little bit what happens once you do eat a lot of torpedoes or citadels, how much worse this, uh, this super heal gets. I think my time with the Duncan has been showing me how much I do rely on armor piercing and overmatch. You'll notice here that my ammo type um, isn't always the right one. This Johan is going to be broadside in some scenarios where I have HE loaded. And then I swap over to the AP, and then he's angled, and then we're going to be bouncing or doing significantly less damage. This is something that I'm going to have to work on as I'm playing through this line. But I think the reason I had a much better time overall with Tier 8 and at Tier 7 is the AP you could just 
mostly run, and it was fine because you're overmatching a lot more. And once I get to the tier 10, it'll likely be just fine as well, considering we get a bunch more overmatch at tier 10. I think Duncan is a bit of a weird one in the line because of that. So I know there's been some people in my Twitch chat that have been saying they've been free XPing through the Duncan, and I think that that's a reasonable thing to do. This is certainly not the highlight of the line, Although it's not the worst one either. The speed is quite nice. This extra super heal is definitely going to come in clutch here. Uh, yeah, notice HE as he's broadside. This was, I believe, my first game, so I'm still kind of getting used to uh, this specific ship. But as I've gone on, I think I've done a little better job at using the correct ammo type and that it's just the guns haven't felt nearly as consistent or hard hitting as the tier 8 as I've played through this tier 9. It's possible that I've just gotten too used to the tier eight. Maybe I got a little lucky with the tier eight um, as well, but it felt like it hit a lot harder against cruisers, broadside, battleships. It really felt like it was a little bit more consistent. So that's been my main complaint, I think, with the Duncan, is that it feels much less consistent. And even though we do have this super heal, I don't feel like I'm actually uh, that much tankier than I was in the tier 8. Although maybe that's just because I was facing lesser competition in the tier 8, since of course we can face down to tier 6s. So we did end up winning that last game, thankfully. And this one we're finally in against our same tier, and I'm down to tier 7. So this is where the Duncan should be doing extremely well. And even flanking, this map is pretty good for a flank. I'm really loving using Brisk here. We get out wide a lot quicker, I think, than maybe that Seattle, or sorry, ne that Neptune was thinking. And yeah, we get a couple Citadels and take him out. So it's not like this ship can't have good dispersion. I've just kind of been feeling like it's a little bit worse than uh, the tier eight that I played previously. And oh my goodness, do we take some damage. You do have to be careful in this ship with flanking and pushing. It's very easy to overcommit and take too much damage. And notice how little HP that we can actually heal back. This is the thing about super heals. They're not this all powerful healing device that's just going to repair your ship no matter what happens. Really only the Minotaur heal is like that. And even then, if you take too many Citadels or Torpedoes, you're not actually getting a lot of value out of that super heal. It's one of the issues I would say with the Salem specifically. The super heal has some value, but it's very difficult to get the full value out of that super heal on the Salem. And it holds true here on the Duncan, and I'm assuming on the St. Vincent as we get to the tier 10. You gotta watch out for eating those torpedoes since we can't heal too much back. We have two heals available, we're on half or less than half HP here, and we can't even use them. So that's gonna be the downside of this ship. You gotta be very, very careful about taking those torpedoes. And of course, Citadels do the exact same thing, where this ship with its giant Citadel can lose a lot of HP and battle capacity if you do take that level of permanent damage. I think the flanking ability of the Duncan is really, really quite solid. Although in this specific game, I'm a little bit too late. I've been trying to find that right balance with this ship of timing the flank properly so that I actually have some battle impact where I'm not too late, like I'm going to be here. And I don't go too soon like I did earlier in this, <laughs> this actual match and take unnecessary damage. It's hard to find that balance, and I think that's going to be the more difficult side of playing this entire line, and specifically the Duncan, as at tier 9 we're getting up against tougher and more impressive competition at long range, figuring out the timing to actually make that flank work. Because as a standard battleship, this ship does not have a lot of armor. It's very overmatchable, and it isn't going to sit there and tank things particularly well. I nearly am able to dodge all these torpedoes, but even Mayhan Torps is tier seven. They hurt, man. And I pop my heal right away and look at how little we're able to heal back. What a pathetic super heal. So unfortunately we are actually gonna go down here pretty quickly. My only hope is that I get one of these amazing torpedoes off and I'm able to do some huge damage to the Freddy and maybe even dev strike out the Otago or something like that with my main guns. Uh, but that's actually not gonna happen since the enemy destroyer played really smart and was just waiting for me to come around the corner. So that's gonna do it for these couple of games here. I'm pretty conflicted on this ship. It feels a little bit like it's a ship that's designed to get you to free XP to the tier 10, 
uh, a bit of a pain point before you get that final reward, maybe. But it's not as bad as some other lines, like maybe Seattle. <laughs> it's one of the worst examples of a tier 9. There's a few others, but I'm not really enjoying my time with the Duncan so far. You're going to have to let me know what you think about this ship in the comments down below. Uh, but let's go on to the build. Since we now have that super heal, I do think that there's an argument to be made for super heavy AP shells. As you saw in some scenarios, we are at risk of still burning out and dying, even without super heavy AP shells making fires last even longer. Uh, so I'm still taking basic survivability, it's still the same commander. I think Adrenaline Rush, all the basic battleship upgrades here at the 4 slot is just going to be the best option for you. Furious is a bit of bait, I think. Um, Brisk is always going to be good on this line, since your concealment is just so good, and you're fast already, and you're always wanting to flank with this ship, given its lackluster armor and pretty accurate hard-hitting guns, especially once we get to the tier 10, I think, and certainly at the previous tiers. Both ammo types are great, so I always want to be taking gun feeder as well. But I do think I will be trying super heavy AP, it might be an interesting option, although given that this ship only has 406s and I want to be using the HE a little more on this one, maybe that's not even a good idea in itself. We do now finally get access to this 6th upgrade slot at tier 9, so of course we're taking main battery mod 3. There were a few situations where I did want a little more range than 19.7, uh, but overall it's not too difficult to work around and the extra reload does come in handy much more often. Still running full concealment, I'm taking steering gears since, again, this citadel is gigantic, so we want to shoot our guns and then angle again quite quickly. Aiming systems, we're trying to get the guns as consistent as possible, although like I said, it hasn't been the most consistent ship in the world. 25 mil front and back, very, very overmatchable, and of course, we gotta show the citadel real quick. Yeah, it's pretty gigantic again, once we get to the tier 10, it will be waterline and much harder to hit. So you get a little bit more tankiness there, but for now, make sure you don't eat torps and make sure you don't eat citadels. I know that seems like, well, duh, basic advice, but in this one especially, since you do very much rely on that super heal to survive and not just a massive HP pool like we had at the tier eight. So not a huge fan of this one personally, but once we get to the tier 10, I do think it'll be worth grinding through this one if you don't have the free XP and maybe even worth free XPing if you do have that extra free XP, since I think the tier 10 is gonna be a good one. So I'm gonna think in the comments down below, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.